Hey family, it's Bill from Word of Christ and it's really good to be with you. I want to start off by saying thank you. Thank you for being on this journey with us. And maybe you're sitting there and you don't feel like you're really connected or you're part of our community or you're part of our family. But I want you to know is the thing that unites us is our pursuit. We are all after this understanding of the mystery of Christ. And I want to thank you for trusting us. I want to thank you for being on this journey with us. We know that you pray for us. We know that you support us. And we know that your excitement is the same as ours. As we look to see the goodness of the Lord and the faithfulness of his promises in our lives. So I just wanted to take a second here to say thank you um, for being part of our community and for being on this journey with us. All right, let's move on. We are on this series uh, that we haven't really named yet, but somehow I have a feeling that by the end of it, we are going to give it a name here. Um, this teaching, we're going to be focusing on the lamp of the body. And so Masood is back with us. We're going to understand what the lamp of the body is and what it means to us. So welcome with me, Masood. Don't forget, we're going to be back at the other side of this and leave you with some discussion points. Family, have a good one. Enjoy this. Open your hearts and your mind, and we'll see you on the other side. Hello, everyone. This is Masood Dramandi, and I'm glad to be back. And today we're going to be looking at what Jesus said uh, in Matthew chapter 6. The lamp of the body is the eye. All right. So there are terms that Jesus uh, uses, terms that uh, are basically members of our body and our body in uh, as a whole. But also he shows how this body uh, is to function. And he puts his finger specifically on the eye. All right. So let's uh, quickly look at uh, the context of what Jesus uh, said and then we get into some details because I believe that this is going to help us into getting into the deeper things of God. If you understand this one thing uh, and this is what actually I've been focusing on since the day that my eyes were open to the reality of the mystery of Christ. Uh, I've been on this, I've done this, I've uh, uh, basically my, my, my whole goal is to go after this and we're going to see what exactly that means. So Matthew chapter 6 verse 22, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Now forgive me because I've in, over the past few days, um, uh, like one day I woke up, I, I, I realized my voice was gone. So it took uh, a few days to get back to normal. And I still don't have uh, my full voice. That's why I'm not going to be uh, speaking maybe uh, loud. So forgive me in that sense. Anyways, so Jesus is saying that um, there's one thing that I want for you. And that is that you may be full of light. That your body would be full of light. I don't want you to be full of darkness. And he says, in order for you to have uh, light, what you need is an eye, but not any type of eye. It has to be a good eye. So he says, a good eye brings light, but a bad light bring sorry, a bad eye uh, brings uh, darkness. So we have to understand uh, what this uh, terms, where, does, where, where do this, these terms come from? First, you have to realize that Jesus is not introducing new vocabularies. He's defining the old. Okay, Man lacked understanding concerning what were uh, said in, in the old, uh, what was written in the old, when I say the old, the scriptures. So uh, Jesus came and brought a new understanding. So the word lamp, for example, was uh, something that was put on a lampstand and the lampstand was put in the temple and the temple, the new is revealing to us that is our body. So when Jesus is uh, using, uh, starts by saying the lamp of the body is the eye, is referring to a mystery and the mystery was the mystery of the lampstand, uh, sorry, the mystery of the temple. Okay, because there was a tabernacle Moses built, later Solomon also built a temple, but both had similar uh, similarities. So in both of them, there was a veil that would separate the whole room into two. So one would be called the holy place and the other one was would be called the 
uh, most holy place or the holy of holies. So, uh, and the holy of holies had no window. It had no light. There was nothing. It was separated by a uh, veil uh, from the holy place. And the holy place had some sort of light. And the light was the light of the lamps of a lampstand. Okay. So I can uh, perhaps put this on uh, the screen. Okay, so let's say this was uh, the uh, uh, tabernacle and then, or the temple, and then we had this uh, separation by something that was called a veil. Okay, so this was, this was a veil. And this separated this holy from the most holy. Okay. So this, all, all of this is speaking to us about, because this is the temple or the tabernacle. And this speaks of our body. We know this. First Corinthians chapter six, verse nineteen, and also First Corinthians chapter three, verse sixteen says that our body is the temple of the living God or the temple of the Holy Spirit, where the Spirit of God dwells in. So uh, when Jesus is uh, bringing the word body uh, and the eye, he uh, immediately is referring to the temple. All right. And now I'm going to say uh, the lamp or lamp stand. All right. So what was the lamp stand? It was uh, one of the furnitures of the tabernacle that was placed in the holy place. So I said that there was uh, absolute darkness in the most holy because there was no window, nothing. But here there was in the holy place, there was some sort of light, uh, and it was coming from the light of the lampstand. Okay, so something like this. Uh, and this was supposed to be first lit, and when it was lit, what would happen is that this place would be enlightened. And when it's enlightened, what do you have? you have light. And when you have light, what happens? You can see. Because without light and there is darkness, you don't see. So now, one thing that I have to, I mean, I don't want to uh, deviate from uh, basically uh, the scope of this lesson, but uh, I want to quickly say that when we say darkness it doesn't mean this is a bad place this is this means simply you have no knowledge of what's going on here so that's why you start from here and then you move here and here in order to move beyond uh, holy and get into the most holy you need light and that this lampstand or the lamp provides this light now jesus starts his saying by saying that now this uh, I is the one that provides this light, okay? So in order for me to see, uh, the I is important. So uh, in Luke chapter, uh, let's see, Luke 8 and 11, both of them kind of say the same thing. Let's look at one of them uh, to realize what actually this means. Um, look at Luke 11 first, uh, verse 34 says, the lamp of the body is the eye. So this is again, the same thing. The lamp of the body is the eye. What actually Matthew chapter six said. So now I'm going to go one verse before, since now we know this is the same exact context to talk about the eye being lit okay so that you are you have enlightenment and you have light verse 33 no one when he has lit a lamp puts it in a secret place 
or under a basket but under a lampstand that those who come in may see the light all right um, now this same exact verse is quoted in the same book book of luke in chapter 8 i'm going there because i want us to um, get more out of this because there is a bit more details in this uh, portion of the scripture so verse 16 says no one when he has lit a lamp covers it with the vessel or puts it under a basket under a bed uh, but set it on a lampstand that those who may enter may see the light you see that this is exactly what i just read in luke 11 but this one for nothing is secret that will not be revealed nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to light wow okay so verse 16 talks about the lamp talks about lighting this lamp verse 17 suddenly goes on to revealing and things to be made known once again a lamp can be uh, off or on i mean uh, today we have uh, you know uh, lamps uh, that work on electricity back then it wasn't electricity it was um, perhaps candles or things like that so they had to lit the lamp and if it was not lit that means there was no light coming out it's just like if the switch is off today there is no light you can't see so Jesus is saying let me tell you something when I use the analogy of a uh, lamp I'm talking about uh, the uh, eye okay and when i say the light i'm talking about uh, the lamp to provide that light and he says if i want to explain what that means i would say that the lighting of the lamp which brings light means your eyes to be opened so that which was a secret and not known to be revealed and known right i said it slowly so uh you can uh, follow so therefore when jesus says i want you to be full of light okay the, the eye the, the lamp of the body is the eye if the eye is good your whole body will be full of light if i say i want you to be full of light what i mean is i want you to know i want you to know to know what uh, to know the things that were hidden okay so that's what jesus says if you don't know the things that were hidden what you're gonna have the things are secret that's darkness if you and what's the other one he said and all of this based on verse 17 it says for nothing is secret that will not be revealed secret and revealed revelation revelation of a secret okay so all that jesus is saying is in the context as if uh, before me there was secret i have come to lit the lamp which means to make the secret to not be a secret anymore and another word another word for secret is mystery i have come that you know instead of a mystery you would have revelation of that mystery yes there was a time that there was mystery yes there was a time that there was a secret yes there was a time that uh, I had not seen, but now I have come that you may see. All right. So therefore, what is this thing that is a, um, what is the thing that Jesus is referring to as a secret? All right. So in order to understand this, I'm going to take you to, uh, there are multiple places we can go and they are all in Paul's epistles because Paul is the one who uh, actually uh, emphasized on these things he's the one that got really what the message of Jesus was others in the beginning they struggled they they were still like thinking about many things while Jesus was all about one thing and Paul got that one thing it was the mystery of Christ that's the only thing okay now um, okay let me just first show you this Ephesians chapter 3 because I said this would set the path straight for all of us to realize what are we supposed to pursue? What are we supposed to uh, go after? What is the thing that we are seeking? 
Is it just many things or perhaps just one thing? Because that one thing is the fullness of light and we're all after that light. And I mean, I, I talked about this that Paul said, uh, John also said, this is the message that we have heard from the beginning, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. All right, so uh, you see how these things come together. Look at Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus for you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which was given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery. See, the words that he's using, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery. Do you know what he's saying? He's saying that uh, he lit uh, my lamp. He opened my eyes. The mystery has become a revelation for me. And he says he did this to me this way. Uh, verse 4. By which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. In the secret of Christ. Jesus said that uh, for there is nothing secret that will not be revealed. Paul says you now understand my knowledge in the in this secret and the secret is the secret of christ the mystery of christ the word secret sim simply means something that was hidden that means it was not out you could not see it's like a treasure that is buried somewhere but then you go dig uh, and that thing comes out so what happened that which was a secret is no secret anymore so uh, you have it so likewise he says there was a mystery the mystery is revealed now I see it, I understand it. And that's why he uses the word understanding. So he says that you may, verse 4, by which you, uh, when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Going back to where we started, Jesus said, the lamp of the body is the eye. Okay, so what therefore he's saying is, if your eyes open to the mystery of Christ, and if you have a revelation of Christ, okay, which was a mystery, if you have the revelation of Christ, that's true light. That's true light. And it says you can have this only if your eye is good and not bad. Because if your eye is bad, darkness. If your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. And the word Again, the word as, uh, good uh, is a bad translation. The truth is that the word uh, should have been translated as single. So Jesus is after a single eye, not a good eye. Because how do you again qualify good? So Jesus is saying one eye set on one thing, that's a single eye. That one thing is the mystery of Christ. And if your eye is set on the mystery of Christ, you're going to see the revelation of Christ. You're going to understand this mystery. And it's, uh, it's not a one-time thing because it's not uh, just a small thing. What was hidden is not... It's not like there was a pen that was buried and I found it and I have it. No, it's a treasure. Uh, it, in fact, let me just go on so you see. In verse um, uh, 4, once again, by which when you uh, read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been, once again, revealed by the Spirit, of, uh, by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles should be uh, fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective work, uh, working of his power. Listen to this. To me who am uh, less than the least of all the saints this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. This is like this treasure is so uh, huge that it's even called unsearchable riches, riches of Christ. That means uh, 
have what what analogy I can use to explain this? Um, think about the uh, uh, the food that is available in the natural realm to us. You uh, you imagine you've been hungry, and then you come and you suddenly find uh, a city. So you were basically a, a vagabond. You were in a desert. You were not having access to anything. Suddenly you come, you see, uh, um, you know, a civilization. You enter and then there is food and immediately you feel yourself uh, and that's amazing. But how many more days are going to take you to uh, discover all the fruits and vegetables and drinks and, uh, you know, uh, meat and bread and oil and all of that? So it's not a one-time one thing. It's not like, okay, I've got the food. No, it's varieties of food. It's varieties of tastes and flavors. Okay, so he says when it comes to Christ, it's riches of Christ and it's unsearchable riches of Christ. That's me that means this is something that is going to satisfy every desire that you have. All right, and in order to have this, Paul is telling us, uh, what he's doing in verse 9 he says and to make all see the word is actually to enlighten everyone so he says this is I'm he says I'm less than the least of all the apostles but this grace was given to me uh, and the grace is that I should preach this mystery of Christ the revelation of it in fact and he says so that I can enlighten everyone uh, what is the fellowship of of the mystery. What that means is that you may fellowship in this mystery. What does it mean? That whatever is in this mystery is yours. It's like you found a treasure. You, you had a treasure map, you went, you dug, you found it, it's yours. You have a fellowship of this mystery. So he says, I want you to see, I want to enlighten you to realize this mystery of Christ is not something to say, wow, that's amazing, what a revelation, now let's go eat. Okay. No, he says, this is yours. If you truly understand what that means, you're going to desire it and you're going to do all that you can, which means to gouge out every other eye. So you are fixed on this one. What does that mean? That means you read the scriptures. The only thing that you see is Christ and nothing else. Because the moment you focus on other things, you're going to have a second understanding, a second knowledge, and you're back to what Eve did. All right, so you see how this works. And this is so huge that actually the word I and things that are related to the I were around Jesus often. Like the word things like uh, blindness. So he called Pharisees uh, blind Pharisees and blind guides and he said if a blind guides a blind a, a, if a blind leader guides a blind they both will fall into a ditch all right so uh, there's so much that I want to say but also uh, uh, there's not much time left uh, so I want to say this that uh, Jesus is all about the fellowship of the mystery and the mystery was that uh, also 1 Corinthians chapter 12 says uh, there is only one body, not many bodies, only one body. And he says because we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit for we are all members of the body of Christ. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 12 and 13 I believe. So when Jesus is talking about the lamp of the body and then we realize the body is the body of Christ and the lamp is the eye. So the eye must be the eye of Christ. That means the body of Christ needs the eye of Christ. That means me, you, the body of Christ, all of us collectively must see things through the eye by which Christ sees everything. Okay, the body of Christ must see by the eye of Christ. This is the eye that Ephesians chapter 1, 
Paul once again tells us how he got this. So that in chapter 3, he says, and I'm giving you so you can have the same thing. Because in chapter 3, we had the word like, that you may understand my knowledge into the mystery of Christ. Now I'm doing this, I'm preaching this, that you, um, so that you may be enlightened to see what is the fellowship of this mystery. But look at uh, where it comes from, Ephesians chapter 1. Uh, Verse 15, he says, Therefore also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, uh, do not cease to give thanks uh, for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eye of your understanding may be enlightened, that you may no. Wow. See, he says, I want the spirit of revelation to be working in you. Why? Because there is a mystery in you. So how can you be aware of the mystery in you if the eye of your understanding is not enlightened? Because the mystery can be in you, but you, you don't know it. You're not aware of it. It's like uh, there could be, you can have a house and under the ground there could be uh, a treasure that is buried, all sorts of precious stones and gold and silver and all of that, but you're not aware of it. You don't know and you, you're not going to use it. But Paul says, I want you to know what is uh, that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened, that you may know. All right? That you may know. Because it's like if you don't know, that means you, the eye of your understanding is not enlightened. That's like you're blind. So blindness is to the mystery of Christ. Okay? Blindness is to the mystery of Christ. Um, the thing is, I haven't seen real emphasis on the mystery of Christ in the church, in the body of Christ. Like we... Uh, obviously there are, there are amazing teachings and all of that but somehow it's like um, different teachings sometimes it feels like I could get better teachings if I would go out to the world and to those who have um, you know um, the, the motivational speakers those who have other sort of coaching and stuff like that I could get better ways of living from them uh, they're really good at it, and they are, all right? Uh, and that sometimes feel like that in the church. That means we are like, it's amazing. Like you get one session and you uh, you hear a message and you're pumped and you go and you try to do it and all of that. But it's, uh, it's not connected because it's not like one mystery that is being discovered. It's like different nuggets that you can go and live by for the next five, six days until you come back on Sunday and you hear something new and you do it. So what I'm trying to say is, uh, when I actually uh, began to study the Bible, began to study specifically the New Testament, and specifically Paul's epistles, I realized that there's only one thing that this guy is talking about. It's like he's single-eyed. That's what Jesus said to do, which other apostles didn't. Because they, they were like... Uh, really very very close to what the church is today that they were uh, after many different things so although there was like yes this jesus of nazareth yes he was the christ yes he uh, died and rose again today we do celebrations like this also but they were also distracted from the message they kind of now they're reading uh, old testament and they're like oh okay so and you know the story there was law still working in the church there was also circumcision there was um, prayer and fasting and ties and all sorts of things so suddenly it's like you get it you know what actually this is all about but uh, also at the same time you allow other uh, teachings to also come and so you're you're suddenly no longer single-eyed and again, that's what Jesus said. And because of that, you have a bad eye. And again, the bad eye is the word wicked eye. And the word wicked 
literally means a toiling and uh, labor and all of that. That's what actually, that's the curse that came because uh, of Eve and Adam in the Garden of Eden. God said, because of what you have done, because of what you have eaten, which was, uh, you know, caused them that their eye may be opened uh, and they saw certain thing and they knew they were naked. And it says, because of that, the earth shall not yield its uh, fruit anymore to you, but you shall toil. Jesus is saying, hey guys, I'm telling you, that eye that Eve gave you, your mother uh, in the flesh, that eye that she gave you, that eye must be gouged out. Because that's the eye that is a wicked eye. That's, that's the eye that makes everything labor-based. That's the one that doesn't see and understand uh, the mystery that you are one with him already. So he says, if you have, if you if your eye causes you to sin, okay, this is the problem. What, I, what, what sin? What I? Jesus is speaking of. Well, you have to see everything in the context of the issue and the solution. The issue was Adam and Eve in the garden and the solution is Jesus Christ. Adam and Eve are the uh, prototype of death. Jesus Christ is the prototype of life. Adam and Eve are the source of death. Jesus Christ is the author of life. They brought the knowledge of good and evil. Jesus brought life. They stole, killed, and destroyed. Jesus Christ is giving us life. Why? Because they were distracted. They forgot. They didn't focus on what they were supposed to focus. They were supposed to not see anything else but that which the Father was showing them. That's exactly what Jesus did when he came. He actually talked about this over and over in the Gospel of John. The Son can do nothing except what he sees the Father is doing. For the Father loves the Son and he shows him all things. So it's like he was focused. He was the Christ and he had eyes and his eyes are the eyes of Christ. That eye is given now to the body of Christ because we are members of the body of Christ. One of these members is the eye. So we have to uh, see in uh, the way that Jesus Christ is. Okay, there's still too much left to say on this, but maybe uh, I can cover that in the next video. Uh, so back to what Jesus said, the eye is the lamp of the body. Focus is that the eye is the eye of understanding and what you are to see to be made known to you is that mystery. And that mystery is Christ. So therefore, that means all that you see uh, in the scriptures is portraying Christ. So when you see uh, anything like garden, river, uh, tree, root, fruit, leaves, uh, water, uh, air, cloud, uh, sky, heaven, earth, I don't know, temple, lampstand, ark, um, sacrifice, high priest, they all speaking of Christ. And if you do this, if you focus on this, you are going to have an abundance of revelation. Why? Because you're focusing on the abundance of mystery. Now people say, how, how, I'm wondering, how do you see, how do you receive all these things? Um, like, how did you come up to have so much revelation? Uh, because, I mean, they, they watch the videos and all of that. Uh, I'm like, it's simple. I, I just did what Jesus said. I focused on the only thing that he said, focus. Because what was his only message after the resurrection? He said, everything that was written in the law and the prophets and Psalm was concerning me. And they're all fulfilled. So then, therefore, look at what was written in the scripture, pass them through Jesus, you understand the fulfillment, then you realize you're part of him, and then you, things, where do, you think, where, where do you think Paul got his message? Where do you think he uh, got the message that uh, whoever is baptized into Christ is baptized into his death, that just as he uh, was... Uh, resurrected by the glory of the Father, we shall, we shall also live in the newness of life. Uh, Romans chapter 6 verse 4. Where do you think he got this message? Well, he focused 
on the only thing he realized that this is all about the fellowship of the mystery that me and him one everything that is true about him is true about me my eye focus on him that light comes to me that knowledge comes to me so my eye uh, now sees i have the knowledge into the mystery of christ i'm having fellowship with him and this fellowship is the father and with his son jesus christ and suddenly re you realize you're partaking of life and not the knowledge of good and evil and you live all right bless you guys i'll see you next week all right family welcome back thank you to masood for bringing us this teaching on looking at the eye of the body all right, and so this is so exciting to see this come alive in Scripture and have the Holy Spirit reveal these truths to us. So here are a few points that we want to leave with you this week. The first one is this, is that the lighting of the lamp, which brings light, means that our eyes are open so that which was unseen becomes seen and known to us. So powerful. See, light is the agent of visibility. Without light, you really can't see. I'll ask you a question. Have you ever woken up in a hotel room in the pitch black darkness and you try to make your way over to the bathroom in the middle of the night? You know, if you don't leave a light on, you are running into furniture, you're bumping into walls, and you kind of have no idea where you're going. And why is that? It's because when you do that, your eyes only see darkness. You can't see reality. You can't see truth. You can't see what is actually in the room because your eyes only see darkness. You see, without light, that which is real, that which is present, is unseen, and you can't see it. And Jesus says the lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, if your eye is single, that's an important word, single, then your whole body sees. It is full of life. He's saying that what you see, your eye, is the light switch of your whole self, if you can see, your whole body is brought into light. Jesus says that I am the light of this world. And in this understanding of the lamp of the body, Jesus is saying that I have come to light your lamp so that your eyes can see what has been in darkness. You see, we don't have to stumble. We don't have to run into furniture. He says nothing that is secret will not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not come into light. The lighting of the lamp, which brings light, means that our eyes are open, so that which was unseen, that which was a mystery, now becomes seen and known to us. Let's move on to the second point, and that is this, is that the magnitude of what Christ reveals are unsearchable riches. This is such an important point that Masu made. See, what Christ reveals, this mystery, this thing that was unseen and is now seen, this isn't just you know, a fact you learn. You don't watch a video for 30 minutes and go, okay, I got it. It's not like statistics. You know, you can't just memorize it. The depths of it are unreachable. We spend our entire lives each day with new revelation. It is an infinite truth. And it's infinite because love, love is infinite. And this is why Masood mentions that this pursuit now makes up his whole life, you know, and I would 100% categorize it the same way for me. It makes you pace the house and you hit one level and then you think about it a little bit more and you find a whole nother level to it. And one of the principles we consistently come back to is that complexity and profoundness are not the same thing. And I think so many Christians conflate these things. They confuse them. The gospel, this mystery is extraordinarily simple. And at the same time, it is endlessly profound. It reaches into the core of our being. It's at this intersection of where our heart, our soul, and our minds all converge. And every time we think we have a grasp on it, it, you know, sort of kind of like messes up our hair and causes us to go even deeper. That Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith, that we, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend what is the width and the length and the depth and the height of this mystery, which is to know the love of Christ, which surpasses all knowledge. That is amazing. This is the unsearchable riches, the magnitude of what Christ reveals to us. Okay, the third point is this, is that Jesus should be the lens by which we see reality. 
And this is the entire premise of this week's message. We are the body of Christ. We know this. Christ is the head of the body. We also know this. And now if we look at Luke eleven thirty four, 34, where Jesus says, the lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when the eye is single, that means when your peripheral vision only sees one thing, when it only sees this mystery, when it only sees Christ, the body, which is us, also is full of light. You know, one of the comments I hear most is, when will the church grow into its maturity? When will we really see the creation transform and come into the glory of God, the fullness of God? You know, the answer to that question is found in this principle. It's when we stop looking at everything else. And when the eye of the body is singularly focused on Jesus, the only thing that we look at, the body will also be full of light. And that's why we say here that Jesus should be the lens by which we see reality. And this last point, uh, family, is, is not something that we really covered, but I want to leave you this thought. And that is this, is that one of the simplest and most powerful prayers we can pray is, Father, let me see what is true. We spent many weeks talking about prayer and the power of prayer. And this is one of the most powerful prayers that you can say. See, if you remember last week, we talked a lot about the purity of truth. We looked at Revelations 22, 1, where he says, show me a river of water of life that is crystal clear. And in this prayer, there is no agenda. You're not trying to superimpose your viewpoint, your opinion, or whatever preconceived notions that we have. We're not trying to do that when we pray this pray, when we pray, when we pray this prayer. And the reason this is such a powerful prayer is that what we talked about last week in that truth is pure. It is absolute. It is everlasting. Think about that. It doesn't change based on which political party is in power. It doesn't change from generation to generation. It's not based on society. And there is zero cultural bias to truth. You know, none of these things have any bearing on truth. And it doesn't care about your age, your gender, your upbringing, your ethnicity, how much money you have or don't have, or what your race is. Truth doesn't respect one person over another. Truth simply is, and it is always stands. And this prayer that we're saying here, let my eyes see it, so that it isn't hidden from me, Father, that I may live my life according to what is true, what is pure. Let me see truth. This is one of the most simplest and powerful prayers that we can pray. Father, let me see what is truth. And I believe when we pray that, he'll show us Jesus. All right, family, that wraps it up. This stretch that we are in has been so good. It's really sweet. And my prayer is that our family of believers also abides in this fellowship of this mystery. You know, that it really kind of consumes us and that we are refreshed with the newness that it brings. You know, his word says his mercies are new to us each morning. That speaks of a refreshing to us. And so God bless you, family. We're excited to continue on. Don't forget, like this video. Make sure you're following our channel for upcoming teachings. We'll see you next week.